On today's episode, we're starting out with this image and we'll eventually change it into this image using Lightroom Classic, Topaz Sharpen AI, Topaz Gigapixel AI, Topaz Mask AI, and some Photoshop thrown in. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I'm starting out in Lightroom Classic today. I just have done some basic adjustments on this image. Here's what it originally looks like. I just done some basic adjustments here, and I do my standard things to it. Like, for instance, on under detail, I shut my sharpening off. Under noise reduction, I don't use noise reduction. And uh, color noise reduction, I use the, the default Lightroom Classic setting of 25. And also, the other thing I do is on lens corrections, I have uh, remove chromatic aberrations checked on, enable profile corrections checked on. And again, I just have some basic adjustments here. I'm going to send this into Topaz Sharpen AI first. It's only ISO 1000, so I think I can get away with just Sharpen AI for noise reduction and sharpening purposes. And then I'm going to send this full-size file into Topaz Gigapixel AI, do some very aggressive cropping, and then we'll send it into Photoshop. And I will add a sky replacement in Photoshop using uh, Topaz Mask AI. So stay tuned. There's going to be a lot of good information here for you. But first off, we need to go ahead and sharpen it and remove noise. First off, what I'm going to do is right click on the image, edit in, and we're going to edit this in Sharpen AI. And I'm just going to send it out as a TIFF file pro photo, which is the largest color space, the one I always use. I'm going to use a resolution of 360. You could use 300, 240. I use 360 because that's what my Epson printer likes. I'm not going to use any compression. I'm going to go ahead and click edit. Editing and copy with Lightroom adjustments. This will fire up uh, Sharpen AI and we will get started. And now here we are in Topaz Sharpen AI. I'm just going to go through this really quick because I have a lot to get to today. And I, and I have a bunch of videos showing you how Sharpen AI works. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my standard workflow. I'm in the side-by-side -side view. I have image quality set to auto, so it lets me know what kind of an issue I have. Is it a motion blur issue, out of focus, or too soft issue? And it's a um, motion blur issue. Right now, it's on very noisy. I'm going to click this over to normal. It'll render itself out again. The image on the left is the original image. The image on the right is the uh, sharpened and noise reduced image. And let me go ahead and zoom into uh, 200% so we can really get a look at this bird here. I'm not sure what the name of this bird is. And again, I want to thank you, Ken, Tony, for letting me use your image. A great shot here. But we're going to see what we can do with uh, Gigapixel to really crop aggressively tight on this image. But first off, let's get some noise reduction and sharpening in here. I'm going to go ahead and use the auto settings. Now, it says it's a motion blur, and that's probably true. And I think it looks good. So compare the image on the left to the image on the right. Now, I still see a little bit of noise in here. This is only ISO 1000, so... But there's a little noise there, and I think we can do better. So let me go. Let me try this. Let's try very noisy and see what kind of a result we get. It has, takes a few seconds to update itself. And yeah, that looks a lot better right there. Let me reduce that noise maybe just a little bit more and see what we get. That looks good. It's very nice and sharp. Uh, do I want to give it any extra sharpness? Nah, I don't think I do. I don't want to be. I might just give it a little bit. I don't want to overdo this. Okay, so that looks nice. And let's just move around and make sure there's no kind of weird artifacts or anything on this image. Make sure it looks good. Everything, I think, is looking good. Yeah, we're good to go. Now, all I need to do, I don't have to do any masking or anything. I'll just click Apply, and that'll send us right back into Photoshop. I'll let this in real time so you can see how long it takes. Uh, Sharpen AI has gotten a lot quicker, and I'm really enjoying the uh, quickness of it. Hey, let me know in the comment section below comment section below what kind of uh, speeds you're getting when you're working with Sharpen AI. I'd really like to hear. Hopefully everybody is getting faster results. And that's at least what I've been hearing anyway. And now we're back in Lightroom. The next step for me is to send this into Gigapixel AI. Now, I have another video explaining why I do this, but I find I get the best results when I send a full file size image into Gigapixel AI. And this image is a file size of um, 7952 by 5304. And I'm going to crop tight, but I'm, gonna, I'm going to maintain that file size. All right. But we're, what we're going to do is go ahead and I'm going to right click on this image and edit in. And this time I'm going to go into Topaz Gigapixel AI. And this time, I'm, instead of editing a copy with Lightroom adjustments, I'm just going to edit the original. 
I still have the original raw file, so I'm working with the TIFF file. So I'm going to edit the original and just click edit. That'll open up Gigapixel and we will get started. Now here we are in Gigapixel AI. Now the first thing I want to do is crop. I'm going to crop right in Gigapixel. Now you can't uh, crop if you run uh, Gigapixel from Photoshop. You'd have to do your cropping in Photoshop first and then uh, run it into Gigapixel. But I find this workflow, for me anyway, works a little bit better when I do the Gigapixel before I go into Photoshop and use the cropping in Gigapixel. So let's go to crop. And we're going to go ahead and crop this now. Right now, the aspect ratio is set for free. We have a bunch of different presets in here. And I'm just going to use the original preset, the original ratio. And I'm going to come down here. I'm going to have like the bird flying into the image. So I'm going to make this a little bit larger. Put him on this third right here. Him or her, I'm not sure which. And then I'll click apply. It'll apply that uh, crop. Now, max width is set for 7952. You can either use the width or the height. Just click on height and enter a height in or enter the width. It doesn't really matter. And you can see I'm at the original aspect ratio of 7952 by 5304. Now I am in the uh, side by side view. So let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit so we can really examine the bird and make sure it's okay. Check around, look for artifacts and so on. Give it a chance to render itself out. Okay, looks really good. I don't see any issues here. I'm going kind of quick, so hopefully I won't miss anything. Forgive me if I do, but I think it looks, I think it's looking good. Now, I have a couple choices here of AI models. Um, I cropped in really tight, so I'm thinking low res is going to be the best. Let me click on standard, give it a second or two to render out here. That doesn't look too bad. That's standard. Here's low resolution. Hmm. I don't know. I think it, either way, it looks good. I'm going to go back to standard. I think I'm just going to use standard resolution. I don't want to overdo this thing. I'm going to leave, leave it on standard. I think that's going to be good. So I have standard and I have auto setting set. Suppressed noise is at 40. I think that's going to be good. I'm going to leave it there. I don't see any noise in the bird at all. I can even see, see the scales on the fish. I'm going to leave the remove blur at the auto setting. I think it's good. No face refinement. No uh, color bleed. Reducement of color bleed. I don't need any of that stuff. All I need to do is click apply and that'll send us back into Photoshop. Now I'm going to let this run out in real time so you can see how long this takes to send us back into Photoshop. It is really quick. And again, let me know in the comment section below how quick yours takes. Now there is a little bug in Gigapixel and when you're running it from Lightroom, it does not close down. All you need to do is come up here to Gigapixel and click on quit and you'll be sent right back to Lightroom. That is a little bit of a bug, so I just wanted you to know about that. Now let's go ahead and send this into Photoshop and replace the sky. I'm going to right click it, edit in uh, Photoshop 2021. I'm just going to edit the original. Go ahead and click edit. That'll send us into Photoshop and here we are in Photoshop. And now what we'll do is come up here to filter and click on Topaz Labs Mask AI. That'll duplicate the background layer for us because that's the way I have Mask AI set up. I have different videos on Mask AI. You can check it out on my channel. So go ahead and check some of those out. I have some really detailed videos on how Mask AI works. I'm going to go kind of quick here today. Just in case you didn't know, Mask AI uses a tri-map system. Uh, there's three colors, green for keep. That's what you see right now, the green overlay. Red for cut, it'll get rid of uh, red, and blue for compute. So what I'm going to do is click subject here, and it'll try to auto-detect subjects. It generally does a pretty good job. The blue area is the compute area. Now, it defaults you with a compute brush, and sometimes what I need to do is just touch this up a little bit. The area is where I want it to compute. See, there's some sky behind, between the bird and the fish here, so I'm going to make that a compute area. This will all be a compute area in here. And around the edge of the bird here, I want to make sure I have some blue on the bird. This will be a compute area in here. And make sure I get this whole tail in. And it does a really good job. And these feathers here, make sure I go in between these feathers so it knows to compute in here. So you basically got to give it a little help to tell it how to compute. Oh, and right here, I missed, there's a little spot missed right in here. So we'll make sure we get that as well. And even right here. Whoops, and there's some red right here. We don't want that to be red. And let's put a little blue down through here. We can paint this all blue. 
and it's pretty intelligent, okay? It uses artificial intelligence, so it is intelligent. And then all we have to do is pick a mask mode. You can use AI for our artificial intelligence. That's generally what I use. You can use translucent. Think of like wedding veils and things like that and contrast it like a basic mask. So I'm going to use mask AI. This is, I could probably get away with contrast, but let's do mask AI. It's generally what I do. I'm going to click compute. Give it a second or two to figure this out, and you will see that the bird will be cut out from the sky here in just a few seconds. And right now, there it is. The checkerboard pattern means the background has been cut out. Now, we can kind of zoom in here and see what kind of a job it's done. And it looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do next is replace the background on it, okay? So let's come here and click Background, and we're going to click on Image, and then Load Image, and when we do that, we get a file browser up here and we just have to point it to where our sky replacement is. And mine is inside of this drive called OWC inside of pictures set one. And here I'll double click this to open it up. And I have some skies that I got from Mac Fun a while back. So I'm going to double click this folder there in the blue skies collection. I have a sky in mind and it is this sky right here. So I'm going to click open. And right there, I have my sky replaced. Now, it's not right yet. So what I'm going to do is click on transform and make the image a little bit smaller. And then just drag these handles here and we can make it bigger. Okay, and get it to fit. I don't want any of that uh, beach down there in my image. And just drag your sky around to put it to the place where you think it's going to look the best. I'm going to go over this way a bit. And you can flip your skies vertically or horizontally. The light's coming from the left in, and that's the way it's hitting the bird, I believe. So I think I'm right on that. I'm just going to go ahead and click Transform and accept that. We see the tri-map over here on the left. We can shut off the tri-map so we can just see the image on the left compared to the image on the right. And we can also move this around so we can see everything here. And this is cool. What we can do, we have two different adjusting options. We have background and we have foreground. We're going to start out in the background. Now the background doesn't look right because it would have to be, I think, a little bit out of focus to look right. So I'm going to take, come down to the bottom here, the slider called blur. And isn't that cool? We have this blur slider so we can kind of blur out that background. Next, I think I want to lighten that sky back there a little bit to kind of match it to the bird. Okay, so we'll get it a little bit brighter so we can pull the exposure up on it somewhat. And yeah, that's looking pretty good. I like it right there. Yeah, that actually looks really nice. And um, let me go to the uh, foreground. Let me see foreground. And we can now we can adjust the bird in the foreground and the fish. So we can come here and, you know, I can darken this if I want to a little bit. Or lighten it, actually, if I think I need to lighten it up a little bit. I wouldn't, I think I might want to lighten it a little bit, but just like a tiny wee bit. Now let's zoom out and take a look. That's looking pretty good right there. Now let me go ahead and zoom in and check around the bird, make sure everything looks good as far as a mask is concerned. Everything looks pretty good. What I might want to do is maybe just shift in the mask a little bit. Let's go to refine by clicking on refine. And we have a bunch of things in here we can do, adjust the edge hardness, uh, the edge strength, edge shift, foreground recovering, defringe. I think I might just try edge shifting it, pulling it in a little bit here, the mask. Can you see that coming in a little bit? Now that's too much. And if I come in, it might just be a tiny wee bit like a minus two. Now we'll just look around the bird and see if everything looks good. And I think everything looks really good. So let's zoom back out. So what do you think? Um, I'm not going to spend too much time here, but I think the sky looks pretty good in respect to the bird. Um, I'm sure I could spend more time on it and somebody will say, well, you know, Dave, it's neat. It's too light, it's too dark, whatever. Yeah, and I get that, but I'm making a tutorial, so I'm going a little on the fast side. But I think for now, you get the idea and I think it looks pretty good. Um, so all we need to do now is go ahead and click apply. Now, when we click apply... We're going to be asked, do you want to apply the image as transparent? That would be sending it back like with a layer mask on it. And then we would like replace the sky in Photoshop. And we could do that if we want to. But I like replacing it here in uh, Mask AI. It's really nice because you have all the uh, foreground and background adjustments, which is cool. 
but I want to choose composite because that'll send it back with the sky already composited on it. So I'm going to click composite and that sends us right back into Photoshop and there we go. So here's the original image and here's our sky replacement. So it's just that easy. Now we could continue working on the image here in Photoshop if we wanted to, or we could just go ahead and save it, come up here to file and click on save. And when we go back to Lightroom, the image will be saved back in there. Or I could do a command or control S, it would save it. Uh, but it's just, it's, just, it's just that easy to do. So I'm happy with this result here. Well, there it is, everyone. We started out in Lightroom. We sent it into Topaz Sharpen AI for sharpening and noise reduction. Then we sent the entire large size file into Topaz Gigapixel AI because I feel it works better when it gets a full size file. We did the cropping with Gigapixel AI, sent it back into Lightroom Classic, and then from there we sent it into Photoshop. We ran Topaz Mask AI on it, and we end and we replace the sky. And we end up with this as a final result. Well, I hope you learned a lot from this tutorial. If you did, please give it a like, share it with your friends, and if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe click that bell notification icon then every time I upload a new tutorial you'll be notified about it well I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the joy of editing with Dave Kelly and I'll see you all right here next time but until then happy editing